All right, well, why don't we go ahead and get started? Um, nice to see you all. Welcome. This is the joint action meeting hosted by your California Bicycle Coalition, statewide bicycle advocacy organization here in California. We've got quite a few members of the CalBike team on the call. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and introduce the, the folks who are joining us from the CalBike side first. Um, and then I would love for you to just go ahead and uh, in the chat, give us your name, the, the organization or company you're representing. And if there are any to topics in particular you'd love to discuss or address today, um, please be sure to include that in the chat. Um, from CalBike today, we've got our new executive director, Kendra Ramsey, who will be int introducing herself briefly. Very excited to have her on the team. We've also got uh, Nikolai Kreidler, communications director here. Laura McCamey, communications specialist. Laura's going to be providing an update uh, on the California e-bike purchase incentive program. We've also got uh, Andrew Wright, our individual giving manager, who's going to help manage the call and will be managing some follow-ups from you all. And Jared Sanchez, our policy director, uh, is going to be also providing some updates. And then also joining us is Steve Wallach, uh, who works as a lobbyist for CalBike periodically, and he's joining from Sacramento to provide some additional commentary. So. Uh, great to see you all. On the agenda for today, we're going to briefly introduce Kendra, as I mentioned, just joined the team, new executive director, also joining from Sacramento. Uh, Jared will provide some relevant legislative updates for those of us in the bicycle industry, e-bikes, micromobility, uh, a few relevant bills working their way through the legislature. He will also comment on uh, what's happening with the state budget, the active transportation program funding. And then we, I believe we have uh, Sean from CARB on the call with us and Laura, they'll be offering some updates on the state's e-bike purchase incentive program. And we'll talk about a couple immediate action opportunities and um, what's coming up for CalBike and ways that you might be able to get involved. And of course, we'll have plenty of time for Q&A and uh, some discussion, any topics that you all would like to bring to the group or uh, discuss with, with CalBike here. So. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, I'd love to turn it over to Kendra, new executive director. She just joined us. Uh, Kendra, maybe you can briefly introduce yourself. What, what brings you to the organization? Great, thanks, Kevin. Um, hi, everyone, happy to be here. Glad to see you all today. Um, I'm Kendra Ramsey, I am in Sacramento. I've been working in Sacramento for quite a few years doing most recently active transportation planning work. So working with local agencies, um, local coalitions, community members on um, planning for uh, the networks for biking and walking of the future um, and writing what, uh, what's currently in the ground and is not meeting folks' needs. Um, in that realm, also working on policy to make it safer and easier for people to bike, walk, take transit, do um, all mobility options. Um, prior to that, I worked in state government, working both in an out-of-state DOT on bike ped um, planning and design, as well as at what is um, now known as the Active Transportation Resource Center, working on technical assistance to local walking and biking programs, um, and got my career started in advocacy, land use and transportation um, about 15 years ago. So a lot of uh, policy background. I've you know, been a been a bicyclist for transportation my whole life. Um, grew up in a primarily car free household in downtown Sacramento, and really see um, bicycling, walking, uh, a lot of mobility options as a key to opportunity for everyone, um, regardless of their background. And so, you know, really love the increased availability of different modes. Um, Want to get people out there, keep people healthy, and am really excited to work with all of our partners on making that possible. So um, yeah, that's a little bit about me and looking forward to hearing the discussion today. And um, you know, definitely thank you all of my contact info. So feel free to reach out if there's anything in particular you'd like to discuss. I know I've connected with a few of you already, so looking forward to getting to know you all better. Thanks so much. I will turn it back over to Kevin and I think uh, Jared next. Perfect. Thank you, Kendra. And yes, um, so next up we've got uh... Some legislative updates from Jared, kind of pending bills, as I mentioned in the bicycle, e-bike, micromobility space, things that we think you all should know. So I'll turn it over to you, Jared. Thanks, Kevin. Um, so last time we met, I think the, these bills, we, we talked about uh, a little bit to uh, get into some of the details of them. 
um, since we last spoke, there was a, a new bill introduced, which may be an interest and something you've all been paying attention to, um, AB 530, to start off at the top here, um, around e-bike licensing. This is a, a two-year bill, so the, the first public hearing for this bill won't be heard until January of next year. Um, so there is still some time to influence the direction of the bill right now as it stands in the text of the bill um, being authored by Tasha Borner, a, a member in North San Diego County, um, is uh, has been very concerned with uh, a lot of the media attention and some of the uh, tragic accidents that have occurred in her community of Encinitas um, as of late. Um, and is offering as a solution to this um, uh, e-bike licensing. Um, so the bill itself um, doesn't state what the program or what licensing will be. It's more of the intention of the legislature to, to get underway on what licensing might look like under a DMV. Um, right now, as it currently stands, and again, this bill is expected to change drastically if, if move forward at all, um, the um, the license would apply to folks who already do not have a driver's license um, um, and uh, the additional provision of the bill, which um, isn't um, as ambiguous as the rest of it, which is would provide a, a right or a prohibition of folks who are or children who are 12 uh, under 12 years of age to operate any class of e-bike one, two or three. Right now, as many of you know, current state law prohibits um, folks under the age of 16 to operate class, uh, the fastest of, of the e-bikes, um, but this would apply to all of them. Um, we've been in several conversations with her. We recently released a, a statement, um, not so much directed at this bill itself, but more around the e-bike backlash we've been seeing, most notably in New York Times piece from maybe a month ago at this point, um, delivering a lot of misconceptions um, and leaving out a lot of uh, information around the, the benefits uh, of e-bikes um, have for, for many folks um, and thinking about other directions that um, need to be addressed, including um, infrastructure, safety, street design, and education and on top of them. Um, so again, this bill, um, if moving forward, won't be heard until January. Um, and I think there's a lot of time to, again, to exert pressure and just influence on, on the direction of this. Um, I was just going to continue through the rest of the bills. Unless um, there's any questions, feel free to interrupt me. Um, I'm looking <laughs> not at the screen of faces, so just interject uh, if you want, want to know more or if I left something out um, regarding that. Um, the next bill, which I, I don't think is as relevant, but just wanted to mention it real quick, um, AB 73, this is the, the safety stop bill, which would allow um, cyclists to yield that stop sign back um, and made into a two-year bill, which essentially just um, puts off um, the uh, committee hearings and the votes for it moving forward. We're not mute, back off. Um, the, author, the author is uh, Tasha Borner, who is leading the e-bike license bill. She released a, a press statement um, about needing to, to reassess uh, bicycle safety options. She has continually pushed this bill and said that the, the safety stop is, is is safer for cyclists, actually. So we're concerned about the direction of this bill um, and um, seeing what she has in terms of mind of uh, traffic safety measures um, and what this might look like for the next year. Um, so I just wanted to put that out there and I think it's looped into the general e-bike conversation. Um, next up is AB 413, this heading at intersections bill, which we talked about last time. Um, it's um, going through uh, the legislature um, at the appropriations committee right now. Um, this would allow, um, uh, I think it's 15 feet uh, of space at intersections of, of uh, car free uh, parking um, to allow safer intersection crossings for pedestrians, um, cyclists, and others uh, using the crosswalks. Um, there's been some recent uh, visions to the bill um, that would add some more local authority and around some concerns from some local agencies on this, um, but it's still moving forward um, in a strong place. And, you know, follows the lead of what many other states are doing in terms of having state law on daylighting at intersections as recommended by NACTO and many other um, 
advocacy and uh, street design organizations. Um, and we're looking forward to yeah, uh, getting this passed and hopefully getting the governor to sign it by October. Um, the last two I just want to mention briefly uh, is uh, an e-bike study bill, um, which I mentioned last time. This um, was, I think, first started off as an idea to restrict e-bike use, um, but after talking with the author's office, um, it was a supporter of e-bikes and the uh, use in terms of limiting DMT um, and, of course, increasing activity and those who would um, more accessibility for biking uh, had turned it into a study bill. So um, this is also in the Appropriations Committee. Um, I think it'll provide a lot of useful data um, about collisions with e-bikes, um, general kind of uh, best practices internationally, um, what other countries are doing around e-bike regulations and safety. Um, and I think we'll provide a, a lot of information um, moving forward as uh, more conversation and focus has been on, on e-bike safety. Um, the study bill, I think, is a couple years out. So it's going to be several years until we get some data. The Mineta Institute in, at San Jose State is, will be the lead uh, agency who will be leading the study. Um, and I imagine much will change by the time the study results come out. But I think we'll provide a, a good um, parameters for um, what we don't already have in terms of e-bike data. Um, Lastly, I just want to mention AB 1447, which we weighed in heavily on and still um, on a, a neutral position. Um, we're able to get some good amendments on this bill to bring some parity between how uh, electric scooters are classified in state law, um, bringing it alongside um, what we see in the e-bike classification. Um, there's um, a couple of amendments that we were helped to, to get across in terms of limiting the speed of the scooters, the the size and weight of the scooters, where they share um, bike lanes with with bike and, and other micro-mobility devices in, in, in infrastructure, um, and um, able to um, limit the speed um, in which uh, a scooter operator can 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 operate on the road. So it's still um, at 15 miles per hour if, if someone is standing, um, but if um, they would legally be allowed to go up to 20 miles per hour, if the, the person riding is is sitting um, on the scooter. So um, we're yeah still in a place of, of neutral on this, um, but I thought would be relevant for this group if you're not watching already to update some of the scooter classification systems. Um, and like I mentioned, bring parity to, to e-bike um, systems that, are, that have already been in place. Um, there is some concern um, from some legislative folks um, about um, bringing restrictions um, to e-bikes if, if this bill was to, to be amended. Um, but um, at this point in time, um, it's it's in appropriations and, and still moving through. Um, and currently, I think, in a good place um, for, um, yeah, not in a place to, to oppose it. So that's the, the key bills that I just thought were relevant and wanted to highlight. But if there's other bills that you've been watching or have questions on, definitely, yeah. Wanted to save some time to, to talk about that, um, but we can move forward if not. Um, I have a quick question for Steve. I'm curious if you have any additional commentary on these bills or really any other kind of pending active transportation or bike or ped safety bills. Um, just from the lobbyist perspective, maybe what's the outlook for bills like this in general? Are there any trends we should be aware of? Anything like that? Um. No, no, I don't have any other specific bills to add. I mean, just right now, where we're at in the legislative session, we have like about two weeks left. They, they're they going to leave on September 14th. The biggest um, um, event coming up this week is going to be the what they call the suspense file hearing. So that's the hearing in the appropriations committees in both the Senate and the Assembly uh, for all the bills that have any basically any kind of cost. So a lot of these bills, if they're still moving, are on that suspense file. So we'll know then you know, what, what's, what's going to move forward and what's, what's not. I think the only thing I think that maybe wasn't on the suspense file is uh, 413, but I can't remember, can't remember for sure. Um, but that's, uh, that's kind of where we're at now. As far as like bills that are like two-year bills, um, it, it's, it's difficult to get those moving, you know, particularly if they're in their first house, like the, the licensed bike and, and the, I think the safety stop maybe 73 is still in, in the assembly uh, because the way the rules are set, they have to be out of the assembly or out of the Senate, out of their house of origin by the end of January. So that gives them only one month. So they work on amendments during the, the break and hopefully have them ready to roll uh, when they come back. So it puts a lot of pressure on trying to get those bills uh, 
moving into the second house before that deadline, which is a, it's a, a big obstacle, but not insurmountable. So. Great. All right. Thanks, Steve. And just a note for the group here that uh, a little later in the meeting, we do have some opportunities um, or Calvic has been working to engage our own membership in taking action on some of those bills that are in the suspense file right now. So, and that's kind of got a pending deadline. So uh, one of our follow-ups for you will be to help us kind of amplify and, and further distribute those communications. And then additionally, Andrew just uh, dropped the link in the chat here to Calbeck's legislative watch page, which includes status updates on a number of other bills that they're that we're watching and monitoring this year. So, um, let's go ahead and uh, do we have any, I guess, questions from the group on these bills or any other legislation moving ahead this year? All right, cool. Hearing none, uh, let's go ahead and move on to our update on the statewide electric bicycle purchase incentive program. We've got uh, on the Calvac side, Laura McCamey, who's been really kind of our project lead on this, and then also Sean Ransom from California Air Resources Board. So I will turn it over to the two of you. Maybe, Laura, you can uh, give us an overview of kind of program basics and, and any updates. And uh, Sean, maybe you can help us understand what's the latest, what to expect over the next couple of months. Sounds good. And and there should be a slide, yeah, um, about this. So this is a lot of information on this slide. And um, Sean, I just wanna invite you to step in. This is the most recent information I had, but you may have something even more recent. Um, I'm not gonna go over all the details. They haven't really changed since the last meeting. Um, the thing that, that's different, I'll just, um, and, and there may be more that's different, and, and Sean, I hope you can chime in in a moment um, and tell us if there's anything new. Um, the big thing that's different is funding. Um, I think we can confirm, I don't know if the money has been, I think it hasn't been allocated yet, but there is another $3 million on top of the original $10 million um, that the California Air Resource Board has uh, resources board has committed to this project. We, I will say that as of now, Calbike has upwards of nineteen thousand people on our interest list. Um, people are really interested in this. We get emails all the time from people saying, "Here's my sob story. I really need this. You know, this bike is really going to change my life, and um, I really need this help to buy it." Um, so I think. There's a huge demand, and I think um, the Air Resources Board has recognized that and is really stepping up. Um, retailers should be able to, um, who want to participate, <clears throat> and manufacturers, that that onboarding is starting um, very soon. Um, and uh, if you can go to the next slide, Kevin, just so there's... Um, I think I put it on here. Maybe it's not. There's going to be a website um, that's it's not live yet, but it will be live very soon where you can get more information about this program. Um, and um, and that will be on calbike.org slash ebikes um, as soon as it's live. And we also noticed that CARB's proposed draft funding plan includes an additional 18 million for this program. So um, Sean Ransom is... Uh, a great partner at the California Rare Resources Board who's been working on this. Sean, do you want to jump in and, and add um, any updates on you know when the soft launch is going to launch and what the timeline looks like? Anything else you can add? Yeah, um, and pl pleasure to meet everyone online today here. I'm Sean Ransom. I'm leading the California Incentive um, Project, e-bike incentive project. And thank you, Laura. That was a great update. I was expecting to do a lot of that, but you know, handled the majority of it, thank you. <laughs> um, and um, yes, all of that information is is accurate. Um, um, I would just, let me start with, um, I, I think there's some industry folks on the line and I thought it might be useful to kind of go through what, it's, uh, what it means to be part of the incentive project as a retailer. So I just wanted to quickly um, mention that um, we are going to have an application process for retailers statewide, um, and this is because the retailers will actually be the ones that are inputting the voucher, processing the, the voucher, uh, receiving the check um, at the end of the process. So a, a applicant would come in and they'd have like a voucher number on their phone and they'd purchase their e-bike, they'd receive a discount, um, the, and the retailer would provide that discount and then input the voucher information into our 
portal that we'll have available for them. Um, and then receive a check in approximately two weeks after that process has happened. Um, that requires the application process, uh, retailer training as well to go through that, understand the eligibility of e-bikes. Um, they'll be selling the e-bikes and we wanna make sure that they're selling e-bikes that match our program criteria, uh, which, which essentially is the three classes of e-bikes, uh, front and rear integrated headlights. Um, operable pedals and one-year manufacturer on electric components. So they'll, they'll need to keep an eye out for uh, what they're selling to these applicants. Um, so with that said, um, let me back up a little bit. And I, I do want to talk about our soft launch and kind of where we're at. Um, we're actually at a really exciting time right now because we are launching our website tomorrow, which is, uh, you know, we've come a long way to uh, develop this resource and we're really excited to share it with everyone. So um, I can drop a link in the chat and uh, this will be live tomorrow. And um, you'll be able to see all of our resources that we've created. Uh, the application for, uh, this is just to start to get the retailers onboarded. Uh, we're doing a soft launch right now. So uh, retailers will be the only ones who can go into the website and apply at this time. We're not taking any um, applicants at this time for e-bikes. So that we've kind of had to partition some of the website off, but you'll be able to get the gist of um, the overall website, what we're putting out there um, and, and the resources we have in mind. Um, I also want to mention one more thing I don't think I saw in there is we've developed a safety um, video for applicants to to view before they're approved for their voucher. So we've um, developed a, a live action video that really goes through a lot of the safety components when you're riding an e-bike, going through intersections, defensive riding, safe route planning, um, all of the things that are gonna keep you safe um, while you're riding in traffic. Um, also battery safety as well, um, you know, recognizing all of the, a lot of the media attention out there on um, e-bike fires and things like that. Uh, so we're really trying to give applicants who might be new to this process, a full picture of what it means to ride an e-bike, take care of an e-bike, provide maintenance uh, for safe riding. Um, let's see. And I, you mentioned the funding, Laura, thank you. Um, you know, and I think with that, I'll stop and see if there's comments, questions, happy to answer those. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm curious if you can speak to the timeline for the vendor application process. Um, you know, if the site goes live tomorrow, does that mean that vendor application process is live, that window is live tomorrow? And does, does that expire? And what does that look like? Right. Yeah. So that is going to be live. Um, we're really focusing on our, for our soft launch, we have four communities that we're really focusing on right now, which is um, a, an area in San Diego, Barrio Logan. Bay Area, Fresno, California, and we're working with some tribal governments. So um, really trying to focus in on this, on those communities. And then um, once we dial in that process of onboarding, uh, working out the kinks in the system with the application for retailers and stuff, we'll really want to go statewide and we'll have some sort of uh, press uh, release accompanied with that when, we, when we're ready to give out the date and um, for the statewide launch. But the soft launch is gonna take about one to two months here to get all the retailers on board for the areas we're looking at. We're also doing a lot of uh, CBO outreach and engagement. So really working closely with these communities to find the folks that really need these e-bikes the most. Um, so in addition to the retailer onboarding process, we're really trying to develop our outreach strategy um, and methods for working with CBOs. Um, it's kind of a new space for us here at CARB in e-bikes, so a lot of challenges, um, new new issues that you know we haven't anticipated that we're working with. Um, but once we do that, once we kind of have that nailed down, in about one to two months, depending on how smoothly the soft launch goes, we'll be ready to start that process statewide. So going statewide with uh, a full retailer um, outreach statewide, and also working with CBO statewide for um, outreach for all of these um, eligible participants that we're really trying to identify. And we're looking at late 2023 for the full statewide launch. Sean, can I ask a question? So 
once the site goes live tomorrow and retailers can sign up, it's not just for the soft launch, but you'll be accepting applications from retailers statewide. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. that process, the whole statewide process can start, even though the first round of incentives will just go to the soft launch areas. Correct. Yes. Mm -hmm. Terrific. And yeah. and you mentioned the safety video. Is that going to be available once the website goes live that anyone can watch that training video? That in it's not ready right now. So okay. We're expecting a couple more weeks. We're putting the finishing touches on it. So, and and is that something where um, if somebody wants to apply for the program, obviously they can't apply yet. Could they once the the safety video is live? Could they pre qualify themselves with that? Part? Like, can they do that part in advance, or do they have to wait till they're in the middle of the quali the application process to to do it? Yes, it will be available on the website. And so it, through, in the application process, it's essentially a, a checkbox that you've watched the video. Okay. So, so yeah. they could do it ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, Sean, quick uh, question about the uh, application process. So when the, uh, the recipient goes to the vendor, and has their voucher number on the phone, that is already pre-approved. The vendor doesn't have to qualify them in any way, shape, or form. Exactly, correct, yeah. So um, our administrator, Pedal Ahead, will have checked all the boxes for them, applications complete, um, income verification, proof uh, of residency. They watch the safety video, um, and then they'll get that approval uh, e email on their phone. Um, no, you... submit... Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to mention that we also have paper applications available too um, for this project. That's great. And uh, from the vendor side, are you approving the vendor or are you also approving bicycle models or uh, how does that going to, what is that going to look like? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, retailers will, will need to be approved in, in order to um, process the vouchers. And then for um E-bike models, what we're really looking at is the, the online models. We are allowing online um, companies to participate in this program, uh, provided that they um, either have manufacturing in California, some presence in a storefront in California, or a corporate office. Um, if they do meet one of those criteria, then they can sell their e-bike online. We'll allow people to buy online bikes. Uh, but we're looking a lot more closely at those bikes. Um, just because uh, we know that the um, there's a lot of opportunity to kind of uh, you know bring in bikes that well they'll have to meet the eligibility criteria and we really want people to buy quality bikes here we don't want you know someone kind of setting up shop that's selling e-bikes out of a cargo container in their driveway or something to that effect um, but yet they still meet the eligibility so. Um, really just trying to keep an eye on the quality of the e-bike and uh, the, the retailers as well. So that's what we have in place right now. So, Thank you. so just to follow up on that question, Sean, if, if somebody walks into an approved retailer, they wouldn't have a list of qualifying bikes. They would just need to compare the bikes that they have in stock to the qualifying criteria and, and, and the retailer is kind of responsible for making sure that they're selling a qualified bike. For the yeah, program. correct, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you all. Did we have any other questions from the group for Sean or Laura about the, the electric bicycle purchase incentives program? Yeah. I got one question. Uh, this is Steve Wallach. On on the, the funding for the future, that says the 23-24 um, may have, is proposed 18 million. Is that part of um, the Air Board's you know, their, their low carbon transportation program, equip funding proposal. Sorry, you cut out Steve just oh, for oh. a second there. The, the, I was curious about the 18 million, if, if that's part of what uh, the funding plan that the, it goes to the air board, I think pretty oh. soon, or is that um, gonna be part of the budget next year? Correct, yeah. So we are actually work grouping the 18 million right now, and um, that will go to the board in November. And okay. uh, I'm not sure if it's going to be folded into the statewide launch this year, or if it might be for another funding window next year. It, um, we we're just not sure at this point. Okay. But it, yeah, 
that's that, that answers my question whether it's part of this year's round so you have you know over 20 million um almost 30 million uh, or it's going to be the future fiscal year thanks yeah mm -hmm. great any additional questions No. All right. Jared, do we still have you on the call? I realized that we skipped over a brief section about kind of budget and administrative action. I'm here. And actually, the one part of that was what Steve just just asked about this um, new funding that I think we're, we're happy about. We were advocating for, for 50 million from the state budget. Um, I think there's a, yeah, uh, a large part of funding just for low carbon incentives. Um, and yeah. Definitely looking for for more funds this round and for next round as we uh, see huge demand. So just wanted to mention that piece. And then the other piece was around um, our big campaign to get more money in the state budget around complete streets infrastructure in particular. Um, of course, the extra transportation program uh, um, is already a longstanding uh, program that receives a lot of funds. It's um, not expected to, to increase um, in the next year, um, and we didn't get any additional funds for bike and walk uh, improvements. Um, it's still I'm hoping for a multi-year campaign, a multi-year ask for us, um, as um, including legislation in future years around funding and infrastructure issues. So just wanted to mention that on, on the budget that was passed back in uh, June and July. Great. All right. Well, um, do we have any other, at this point, we've kind of got a, a, an opportunity for topics from the group. If anyone has other pending bills or legislations, questions about the e-bike program or other state bicycle, pedestrian, active transportation programs, other general topics of interest. Calbike has been doing a fair amount of work recently around uh, some of the um, kind of exploding concern around safety and education for e-bikes. Uh, we'd be more than happy to discuss that with any of you if you're interested. I feel like we could talk about it for hours. Um, well, doesn't look like we've got any hands raised. So I'm going to move move us right into head into a couple of immediate opportunities for action here. Jared had mentioned earlier, and um, as did Steve, that we have we do have a couple of bills that we've been monitoring this year that are on the suspense file. So we do have a, a kind of a slate of actions that we've been pushing out to our own members and networks. We would love to call upon you all to help us amplify that messaging, get the word out a little bit further. So when we do send out follow up emails, we'll be sure to include a link, which includes uh, um, you know our landing page for those actions. If you're able to distribute that to your own networks, employee newsletters, anyone that you think might be willing to get engaged on that. We would most certainly appreciate the support there as a communications partner. And then we do have a couple of immediate uh, bigger opportunities to plug in. Of course, we have the joint action meeting series here. Our goal is to run this call three or four times a year, keep you all in the loop as to what's happening in the California legislature and with statewide programs. Um, so, of course, you know, if you can share this event, invite other colleagues of yours, be here and contribute your perspective. We certainly do want to hear from you. It helps us kind of understand what's happening in the in the business community and how we can take that information and use that to shape our strategy in California. We do have a couple of immediate opportunities. We are going to be calling on you all to contribute with your uh, dollars and communication support. We would love for you to join our annual business membership program that comes with some year-round recognition benefits, connection to the CalBike team, opportunity to really, like I said, have your perspective heard and represented in Sacramento. As I mentioned, we would love for you to amplify a CalBike action, share our petitions and targeted actions with your audience and, and community. And, and in the immediate next year here, we do have a couple great opportunities to sponsor CalBike campaigns and events in particular around the California Bicycle Summit, which will be happening in April, 2024 in San Diego. Great event, three-day professional conference that pulls together bike advocates, transportation officials, and uh, that's a couple of days of workshops, presentations, social events, bike tours. We would love to have you there. Am I missing anything? Nikolai, Laura, Jared? immediate opportunities, other ways to collaborate. Andrew is including a couple of links here in the chat for you, which will direct you to our business member program and the 2024 summit. Uh, do we wanna mention the complete street survey? It's not out yet, but will be soon. That's that's another uh, action that could yes. be shared. 
Jared, could you do a quick summary of that for us? Yeah, so as part of our, our history of advocating for complete streets, um, Caltrans has updated their internal policy around implementation of complete streets in the last couple of years. We want to do a report on uh, accountability report, really, about how much has changed in the last couple of years since that policy has passed. So a part of that work, we're releasing a survey out to our, our members um, and gen generally to the, the public to assess how comfortable they feel, how much they access um, the state highways in their communities that act as main streets um, that run through a lot of their neighborhoods um, that Caltrans um, owns and operates um, and would love to have complete streets infrastructure on. So we're going to release that, I think, the next month. Um, and yeah, we'd love to give uh, you all and, and others to, to circulate that to get as many respondents as we can to, to get information to Caltrans and also to support our work and making sure we get complete streets um, on our state highway system. Great. Thank you, Jared. All right. Any other topics, questions from the group, questions, comments before we start to wrap up? Okay, great. Well, thank you all so much. Uh, we will be sending some follow-ups to you all with the meeting recording from today.